Hi, everybody. This is Christy Kerner, host of Real Women, Real Happy. Joining me today is Christina Kehoe. Welcome, Christina. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Well, thank you for having me. Welcome. She's. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. used to doing interviews, too, right, so I get it. That's <laughs> no, all good. Well, Christina, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about, you know, kind of what keeps you busy nine to five and then on the weekends and whatnot. Give us a sense of your oh, world. Oh, my gosh lots of things. Um, so for my, well, I don't know if it's necessarily considered a nine to five. It's way more than nine to five. Um, I am a, a community builder for a company called Homey. Um, they are a real estate technology company that launched in Utah about three years ago and in 18 months became the number one broker there. And they've decided to expand and Arizona is their first market outside of the state of Utah. And I'm part of the process of helping build the brand and awareness of Homey in Arizona. And it's been an absolute um, wild ride. I've been in B2B my entire career and this is my first shot at B2C and it is exploding the um, dimensions of what I think uh, creativity can possibly be in a job role. Wow. So, like we're working on things like uh, billboards and a lot more field marketing efforts, like being involved at festivals and um, lunch and learns and telling our founder story kind of all around Arizona, which is being received very well, I think. Um, and yeah, I think. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and then other things that I do. Gosh, we're, we're talking about creating happiness. So sometimes you can get so bogged down by work. And I definitely believe that you should be in a job that makes you happy because it is so much a part of your life that, um, so I'm not saying like any of these things are like escape, escapism things from, from my job. I do love my job, but um, I play cello and that that's something that I started picking up about two years ago. I went on a trip to Prague and Poland and Germany, and there's tons of string street musicians that are kind of scattered throughout the major cities at night. And it was just an absolute, I just loved that experience of cool. walking down the street and hearing that. And then I always had a dream from when I was a little girl that I wanted to play cello, but my sister played piano and so my parents invested in a piano and so when I wanted to play an instrument it was a piano <laughs> and um I finally realized as an adult like why do like why didn't I go after that I can go after that now and so when I got back from that trip I rented a cello found a teacher who is absolutely amazing she works with a lot of adult students so I typically will go to her house after work or sometimes as late as like eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night wow. and we'll practice and she plays viola. And so we'll, we'll do a lot of like playing together and it just, um, that has been a deep source of happiness for me. And then another thing that I do, that's a little weird. Like I love startups. So I think that's a little like, um, that's like a little like against the norm, I think, for start as a and, hobby, huh? Yeah, in in Arizona, at least. But I'm also I I figure skate. I do a lot of ice skating on the weekends. It's something I've been doing since I was about nine years old, and I absolutely love that. So you wouldn't think like in a place where hell will freeze over before pond will <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that ice sports would be a thing for me. But um, it's something that I definitely love to do as well. So those are kind of cool. the things that I do outside of the quote unquote nine to five. So as you know, a big part of what we're trying to do with this series is to help women understand how they can create happiness in various parts of their life. And when I say happiness, what I really mean is kind of that internal sense of balance and peace and zen and like things are just going well and you feel really calm about it. You know, it's, it's, you don't have a lot of negative self-talk in that area. You don't have a lot of Kind of chaos or discord it's really just you've hit your groove in, in an area of life so what area have would you like to explore a little bit today um i think the idea of um i think i really so i want to talk about something that i think really really changed my life and my perspective um 
there is a TED talk by this guy named Jia Jiang, and it's called like a hundred days of rejection therapy or something like that. But it's Mm -hmm. ever since I saw this TED talk, um, and you'll have to go and see it, but he talks about, he made it in a list of like a hundred things that he didn't think he would ever like that people would say no to. And he went down this list and it was everything from silly little things like asking the crispy going into Krispy Kreme and ordering uh, donuts he made in the shapes of the Olympic rings and colored exactly how they are. Uh, and all the way to asking a stranger if he could play soccer in their backyard. And as he cre- as he went down this list, he found that actually very few people said no. Wow. And it really changed my perspective on the things that I thought were possible in my life. Because how many times do we put rules and limitations on ourselves that aren't real? They're just self-created. So I think ever since watching that, and um, he also has a book as well that I think is really inspirational, I started to think about, okay, every time I thought that something wasn't possible or that I couldn't do something, to go and try to do it anyways, and more often than not, I found the same to be true in my life that very few people say no. Interesting. So, and that I think has caused me to be able to get a lot of things and do a lot of things that are like some of the best moments in my life. And if I hadn't had gone, hadn't gone for them, like, I don't know. It's just. Interesting. So it kind of gave you permission it, yeah. to really be assertive and to really just take that chance. Um, was rejection something that in the past you kind of had a nervousness about, or do you think more of just in an average sense, you know? Yeah, I think I didn't realize it was even a thing until, until it's, you'll, I mean, there's just so many things where you're like, oh, I can't talk to that person or um, they won't find me interesting or uh, that project isn't for me or, or things like that that you just Got tell it. in the back of your head. Um, like for example, um, it was just this, literally this last week I was sitting in SIP waiting for a coffee meeting and in walks, uh, Lindsay Fry. So I'm a huge hockey fan. Um, go coyotes. Um, (laughs) but Lindsay Fry is a silver medalist with the women's USA hockey team that won uh, the silver medal in 2014. And I've been following a lot of her work because she helps girls, um, um, with her hockey program, Lindsay Small Fry, she walks in and I like, at first I was like, you know, I'm going to leave her alone. Um, and then I was like, that's dumb. Like I'll go up, I'll say hi, and I'll say, you know, thank you for everything that I've seen her do. And then lo and behold, we start this conversation about, um, me having like an opportunity to skate coach her younger girls, which is I've always wanted like, wow, talk about a limitation. I never realized that when I was young, I didn't realize that girls played hockey because I didn't have, I didn't, all I saw were boys playing hockey at the rink that I skated at. And so this year I made it a goal that I was going to finally put on hockey skates and learn hockey. So it's kind of like this, she's going to teach me a little bit. And I'm going to oh help her. Oh my gosh, that is so Great. cool. So, and here I could have just sat there and continued doing my work or whatever else and not have made that five minute interaction of saying hi. And it, com- it could completely change. Like, not only am I going to accomplish the goal of learning to play hockey, but it's from a silver medalist. So. That is freaking awesome. And all because you were not afraid to be rejected and realize that, you know, you could, you could get up and you could just go do that. Yeah. That's awesome. I really like that. That happens, but (laughs) But. yeah, that's really cool. Can you think of any other examples of um, places or times when you've kind of had a similar experience like that? Just even startup grind. Like um, I met Zach Ferris, who's the founder of Coplex at a conference called Collision in Las Vegas. And we just crossed paths. And then it was actually where I started to learn about the Arizona startup ecosystem. 
And then he said, Oh, well, we, we sponsor startup grind. You should come to the next one. It's this great event. And then that's when I met you. And I was like, I want this event to succeed. And so I remember, I think I came up to you. I was like, I'll do anything. I'll pick up trash. I'll do <laughs> whatever it takes. Yep. Hashtag best volunteer ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and I think that little moment of like realizing that all it takes is you coming up to somebody offering help. Um, you could have been like, no, I, I just, I'd never met you before. I don't trust you, but you said yes. And then lo and behold, here I am. Like it was like six months later, I was running the chapter, ran it for two years. And now I've been able to pass off the opportunity to somebody else to build yeah. their in the community too so that is that's another example of that um yeah. it's just those little opportunities of just going and starting the conversation that's true and you know what's funny is in that example specifically it's pretty obvious that like if i was to have said you know no i don't know you i don't trust you like that so obviously would have been my problem not your problem so when it comes to taking that risk to reach out and to put yourself out there with the chance to be rejected, even when you do get rejected, um, it's worth noting that it really probably in most situations had nothing to do with us or you, the person asking, you know, it was just something going on on the other side over there with a, a person that just didn't have the right uh, foundation or balance or something in their own life to be able to be open and engaged. So interesting. Well, very cool, my dear. All right. So um, if you were to give like if, you know, in summary, I guess I should say, if you were to give, <laughs> sorry, your top tip or two to someone that is looking to kind of build their confidence and be able to be assertive and step out and take chances like that, what would you say are just kind of your top tip or two in this? Gosh, um, I think the next thing that scares you, just try to go do that thing. And you'll see, and you should see, hopefully, I hope it's a good experience, probably will be, um, that, that that thing can come true. Um, another cool tip is, that I learned from a company that I've worked at before in the past, Infusionsoft, I was there for about five years, we had a dream manager. And so one of the exercises, the very first exercises that you go through with the dream manager is to write down 100 dreams. And you'd be really surprised how hard it is to get past even yeah. 10 or 20. I believe that. And doing that exercise, um, getting to 100 dreams will like push your thinking of what's possible in your life. And as you start checking those things off, it just gets this, these creative, this creative energy going and you can begin to see like how much more you can push yourself to accomplish the things that you want to do. Cause you, you only get one life and, um, and it's really important, I think, to just really grasp the moment and, and be present in every day and like figure out what are, you know, what are those dreams? What are those things you can go after? And what are the limitations that you're putting on yourself that don't actually exist? I love it. Thank you so much, Christina. That is great advice. You have been, a uh, Great contributor here today. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> well, very good. Um, I think that is it for us today. So, uh, Christina, if people want to get in touch with you, um, I'll put your social media links right up on this post so that they can access that. Um, Perfect. And I think that's it. So, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Christina. Thank you for having me. <laughs> bye bye.